So before I lose all of my viewers to overwhelming boredom, let's start taking a look at the actual flashlights that I'm going to be evaluating here. Let's start out with this one. This is advertised as one of those tactical doohickey flashlights, just because it has sharp edges here, I guess. I don't know, but this one was, I think, 50 cents in cost. It is very obviously a Chinese style flashlight. It has a top that screws off with a rubber o-ring. You can tell the threads are super high quality because it squeaks and doesn't really thread properly. There's also pieces of plastic stuck inside the lens reflector, which is awesome. I actually think it's glue because they don't come out and I try to get them out. And the back screws off. There's a button on the end. Very typical construction. It's really cheap. I think I could probably squeeze it with my hands if I really tried to and deform it. Uh, but uh, it does seem to work pretty well. It's nice and bright. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more later. This is also another Chinese flashlight. And this one actually has a tag on it yet, which says, for one, made in China, and two, glow-in-the-dark 3-watt flashlight. And uh, 3 watts. Is it really 3 watts? Well, we'll find out. Most of the time when something's advertised from China with a spec, you can be sure that they are lying to you. Or, more likely, that they simply don't understand what that spec means. They just assemble things. They don't design them. But this one is kind of nice in that it's glow-in-the-dark. When the light goes out, you can find it. And also, it's nice and bright. <clears throat> Both that flashlight and this one take three AAAs, a very typical construction. I'll explain why that is a little bit later. But uh, this is flashlight number two that we'll be taking a look at. There are other LED flashlights available. This happens to be an Energizer. This one's fairly old, but they still sell lights like this. It has a single white LED in it with with a lens on the end. If you unscrew it, you can take a look inside and see that it runs on two AAA batteries, which seems like kind of an odd choice. Why have this massive case and stick AAAs in it? Might as well use double A's, right? Well, it turns out that wasn't actually a horrible design decision. Now, being it's made by Energizer, you might think they just, that they just use AAAs so that you have to buy a whole bunch of new batteries. And that may be part of it, to be honest, but overall, I kind of like this flashlight, and I think you'll see why when we're done testing it. Um, or at least I think we will. Maybe my evaluation will change my mind. But in the meantime, here's an Energizer white LED flashlight. Now, this one, I think I also got free after rebate at some point, but you actually pay some money for this. This is probably a $5 flashlight. Still pretty reasonable. This is just about free. So, which one is better? We'll find out. I threw this one in the mix because this is one of the very old LED flashlights. If you take a look at the end, it's not one of the newer style single die flashlights. There's a whole bunch of dies in here, all in parallel. And it is also run on three AAAs. This happens to be a Guidesman brand, if that means anything to anybody. And uh, it works pretty well. I kind of like these flashlights, really. And through my evaluation, I think you'll probably see why. It seems to be pretty decent quality. It's not the brightest, it's not the most modern, but it simply works. And this is the most valuable flashlight of the bunch. This is a Maglite 2D battery flashlight. And uh, yeah, it's a Maglite. If you want to know more about Maglites, there's plenty of videos out there about them. There's enthusiast forums all about these. Candle power forums comes to mind. And uh, it has a very good quality construction. I'm rather disappointed in this, to tell you the truth, because it does cost some decent money. I think I paid $15 for this, the retail for $30 normally. But uh, overall, it's the best flashlight of the bunch, and you would expect that. It costs the most. But really, how much better is it than one of these? Let's find out. Also, just as a comparison, I'm throwing in two other flashlights. These two here. <clears throat> this is a late 90s flashlight, very, very standard construction. I wanted a baseline to compare these newer LED flashlights to. This is a standard tungsten filament flashlight. Not a whole lot of fancy stuff to say about it. It's just a standard flashlight. They made them like this for decades. And this one here is a Maglite Mini. This is a modern flashlight, however, it is not LED. And the reason I wanted to include this one is because for one, it's the only flashlight that runs on double A's. 
in fact two double A's, but also because it has a xenon filament bulb. And xenon means that it runs at a higher color temperature than the standard tungsten. And you can see that one is yellower, one is bluer. And that means that it is more efficient, and my test results will show that. And I also wanted to compare these LED flashlights to one of the old style xenon bulbs to see how well those really worked. What I want to cover next is another technical thing, why color temperature of a bulb matters. So I had mentioned that the efficiency improved greatly when they went to the tungsten filament bulbs, and that's because the color temperature increased, the filament temperature. This one, they were able to increase the filament temperature more, but, re but still maintain the light bulb life by using some special methods that I won't get into. So I'm going to quick describe why that's important to light bulb technology. And this also applies to lots of other lights out there, standard incandescents, halogens, etc. So color temperature or filament temperature, which is the same thing in this case, of an incandescent light. Why does that matter? Well, let's take a spectrum of light, and I'm just going to draw it right below this chart. You have a whole spectrum, goes from radio waves down at the bottom, up to microwaves and so on, up at the top. But in the middle, there's a visible range. You have red and you have blue. And anything between here, you can see. Long wavelengths, short wavelengths. Red, link, red light is long wavelengths, and blue light is short wavelengths. If it falls outside this band, you get infrared down here, which feels like heat, but otherwise you can't sense it, and ultraviolet up here, which gives you sunburn, but otherwise you can't really sense it. In the middle is what you can see. Now, a black body radiator, which is what a light bulb is, has a certain uh, shape to the light. So at a lower color temperature, it peaks at the low side. At a higher color temperature, it peaks at the high side. So let's just draw a quick curve here to show you what I mean. So let's talk about the very old carbon film. Carbon filament lights that came in the original flashlights, they would have a spectrum, an output spectrum that looked something like this. It would peak in infrared and it would just die down like this. So what you can see is just between these marks and this is what you can't see. So that means that most of the energy is being wasted. It's just being given off as infrared light, this whole amount here, and it's all wasted. This is all you can see. Lots of red, not much blue. But your eyes are very good at compensating for different amounts of different color light. They're used to that during different parts of the day, uh, at sunrise, sunset, midday. The spectrum of light that's available is very, very different. So your eyes are naturally able to adjust and compensate for this without any eye strain whatsoever. It's a matter of preference for color temperature. But only what's between these two marks here is what's useful, and most of it's wasted. So when they went to a higher filament temperature, when they got tungsten filaments, which allowed them to use a higher temperature filament, this curve shifted. Now instead of being out here, it was maybe over here. And now there's less wasted, just this part right here, and a lot more visible light available, even though they both took the same amount of power. And when you go to other technologies, halogen for example, or xenon, or whatever other technology that there is for incandescent lights, it's all the same sort of thing. Your filament temperature increases and that shifts this whole curve up. This flashlight over here, for example, may have a curve that looks like this. And now a very small amount here is wasted and the rest is usable over here. So that's why filament temperature matters. And I'll come back with a clean curve here once again to explain how this relates to LEDs. Now, let's compare a standard filament light to an LED flashlight. The LED flashlights often look blue. Why is that? Well, that's because their output spectrum is far, far different from the old style incandescent lights. And it's not different in a good way. It is an inferior light. It always will be. That's the way it is. It's a matter of physics, and it can't be improved, or at least it can't be completely fixed. And let me explain why that's the case. First, let's take a look at what an LED is. And I'll just draw a lamp-style LED here. So you have an LED. There is a positive and a negative terminal on it. These terminals go to some sort of die in here, which emits light. 
Positive may run up here with a bond wire, negative to the bottom, whatever it is. <clears throat> and this particular uh, silicon structure emits light. And they put that in a viewing cone, just like the cone in a flashlight here, except it's miniature, to direct the light up so that it emits in this direction. And the actual body of the LED, this dome shape here, which is the lens of the LED, is made out of epoxy, not plastic, because it has to be very stable for various reasons. But the problem here is the light. LEDs are light-emitting diodes, and by definition, because of their band gap energies, they only emit in one wavelength. That means that they can be red, they can be blue, they can be amber, they can be cyan, they cannot be white, because white is a mixture of every possible wavelength. So how do you turn something like this into a white LED? Well, to put it directly, you don't. It is impossible to get a white LED. There's a few different ways to do it, but I'll just concentrate on the common ways. Now, basically, a white LED is the same as a fluorescent light. A fluorescent light excites uh, mercury vapor inside a glass tube, the mercury vapor emits ultraviolet light. You can't see it, it's useless, unless you're running a tanning bed or something. So the ultraviolet light then hits phosphors or other uh, such substances which absorb the UV light and emit that in uh, a different wavelength of light. So let me explain how this works with LEDs since it's basically the same as with fluorescent lights. The only difference is the color that they use to absorb. In LEDs, they always use a blue LED. <clears throat> they always use blue, because blue is the most efficient dye available. And that's why they use blue. Also, it's more compatible with phosphors that people are familiar with using, because it's closer to UV, what uh, fluorescent lights use. There's been a lot of research on that already. But they always use a blue LED. And you may notice that if you compare an old-style flashlight here to an LED flashlight here, one is extremely blue compared to the other. And the reason for that is this. They're using a blue LED dye. <clears throat> they always do that. Now, if we draw the same spectrum here once again, with visible light available between here, this being infrared and this being UV, you have the visible spectrum. Red, green, blue, with all the other colors of the rainbow mixed in. So this blue dye emits a very high spike right here in blue. <clears throat> and that's great if you want blue light, but what if you want white light, like a flashlight does? Well, then they take this LED body and uh, they mix in diffusants to make sure that it emits evenly, and they also mix in phosphors. They're not technically phosphors, but that's the common name for them, so I'll call them that. And in a cheap flashlight, like one of these little Chinese flashlights, what they normally do is they mix in just a single phosphor and that'll be a yellow one. So if you have red down here and green over here, they mix in a yellow one, which is between red and green. It steals some of this blue light and re-emits it as yellow light. <clears throat> and now this part doesn't exist anymore, just a blue spike and a yellow spike. And that's good enough to trick your eyes into thinking that, yeah, it's kind of whitish, I guess, and you kind of see it as white. but it doesn't really render colors properly. It's a very, very poor quality light that leads to eye strain because your eyes are used to seeing a curve, a nice curve that moves in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, something that has all of the wavelengths involved, not just blue and yellow. So if you move up to a better quality flashlight, something like this mag light, what they do instead give you a whiter light than what a cheap flashlight would give you. Instead of blue, it's now white. What they do is they put in more phosphors. They'll put in this yellow one, but maybe they'll also put in a green phosphor and a red one, something like that, so that there's more wavelengths available. And again, the blue spike decreases again. Now there's blue, maybe there's cyan, maybe there's a reddish color, a yellowish color, an amber color. Now you have a whole bunch of different wavelengths involved, and it more closely approximates the standard black body curve that we showed earlier. Sure, not all of these wavelengths are available, but there's enough of them available to get a reasonably good approximation. And it's good enough to trick your eyes into thinking that all wavelengths are present. It still will not have as high of a color rendering index because 
What if you're looking at something that is this color? Well, there's no light at that color, so it won't look correct. But a black body radiator, sure, it has light at that level, so it will look correct. In any case, I don't get too long-winded here if I haven't already, but let's move on to evaluating the flashlights. I just wanted to do quickly outline this because I find it fascinating and maybe somebody else is interested as well.